I've been looking for an excuse to do a Switch review for a while now, mainly because I wanted to film the controller. Just look how cool it looks. The excuse in question is Streets of Red, or more specifically Streets of Red Devil's Dare Deluxe. A permadeath beat-em-up with skill levels, combos and a good splash of horror to please the most reclusive of Evil Dead fans. It's clear from the outset, well even from the title, that this thing has taken a huge dollop of inspiration from Streets of Rage, and then littered it with parodies from cultures far and wide. We've even got Jim f***ing Sterling's son portrayed as a boss. So let's load it up. Developed by indie game studio Secret Base and released, well, today actually, the 12th of April 2018, the title is initially available on PS4 and Switch, with other platforms to follow. Secret Base were previously responsible for Tobe's Vertical Adventure, released on Steam in 2011, and the Flash game Bite Jacker. Actually, if you want to get technical, this game is the sequel to Bite Jacker, or sequel sequel at least, given that Devil's Dare, released on Steam in 2014, is the original incarnation of this deluxe outing. Anyway, I've just whizzed past the title screen and we're now in the arcade mode story, which thankfully you can skip, not because it's bad, just because I dislike any form of cutscene. Essentially, you're a bunch of people and everyone has turned to zombies, so let's kill them. To begin with, there are four characters to choose from, although another two are unlockable. Each character has their own strengths and special moves, so choose wisely. I'm going with Queenie to begin with. Let's do this. Now, I'm a fan of ridiculously simple gameplay in arcade fighters, so these moves looked a bit too complicated for me to start with. Thankfully, the tutorial mode does its best to get you ready. Essentially, you've got your regular attack, which allows lengthy combos, or your special moves activated by X or B buttons and a direction. Special moves consume SP, but they're useful for smashing more cash or food out of foes. For instance, you can perform fatalities, which provide a reward offsetting your burned SP. You can choose from one of four stages, but I'll go through in order here, starting with the sewer. Man, these intro scenes are packed with nostalgic feeling. As you venture through, there are numerous enemies, traps and obstacles to tackle, but also food, money and power-ups in boxes and the like. Regardless, your SP will slowly regenerate as you go, so even if you find yourself in a pinch, you can just hold out before pulling off some delightful smackdowns or whatever you want to do. The food regenerates your health, but the money is also pretty essential because if you die here, you'll need to buy your way back into the game or face permadeath. The idea is to recreate an arcade situation, and it actually works quite well. Unless you're the million dollar man, of course. But I'm the million dollar man. Game over! Okay, second attempt, and this time I'll play as Kingston with his fat shovel, who you may recognise as similar to Arthur from Ghosts and Goblins. He even loses his armour when hurt, which is a nice detail. But the game is filled with nice details. I'm not going to point out all the parodies here because we'd be here all day. Thank God for me. But there are even parodies of the beat-em-up genre itself, like these large topless guys who run at you and punk women wielding clubs. Although the dress code seems a bit more acceptable given they're now zombies. The point is, it's chock-a-block, and it's pretty fun to go through and find them. In fact, the game is designed to be played through multiple times with multiple routes and potential new content on each run. For example, if you choose to play through the stages in a different order, then the later stages you select will still have more levels in them and more bosses, despite going in an order which doesn't necessarily seem the obvious one. It's a nice touch. 
And this is good because although I'm playing on casual mode this time, I managed to blast through the stages pretty quickly. But then casual mode is for amateurs and in fact it doesn't unlock any achievements. So you're not going to play on that mode anyway, are you? Talking of amateur, there's also a choice of power-ups at the end of each level you can buy. So I tend to stick to life-preserving purchases, but if you want to save your cash for credits and lives, then you've also got that choice. My favourite levels are actually the static scenes, like the train carriage or elevator, because every beat-em-up has a violence-packed carriage and a gigantic never-ending elevator, of course. But somewhere you can just concentrate on killing havoc without having to keep walking. Not that walking is bad, it's just boring compared to the incredibly fun fighting experience. I mean, it's not up to Streets of Rage standard for me, but it does offer so many additional elements and possibilities that it's fun, in a more intelligent way. It took me about half an hour to get to grips with it, but then it was a lot of fun afterwards. For my kids, they picked it up straight away. The more you play, the more you can do as well. You soon realise that smashing baddies into other baddies is immensely satisfying, for example, and a good way of dealing with multiple opponents when trying to conserve your SP. The bosses crop up in a pleasing fashion, not too often, but regular enough to keep you engaged. And fighting them is really no different to fighting the normal minions, well, apart from dodging their weapons, but it's not a frustrating experience, unlike boss fights in other games. The only thing I did find frustrating was often my special moves wouldn't pull off correctly, and although at times it felt like the game's fault, it was mostly lack of placement on my behalf. And so it's the kind of frustration you target at yourself rather than the game, which is the best type of frustration, because it keeps you playing. Another point is, unlike the games we're used to, if you corner enemies at the edge of a screen, they won't fly off into a screen area that you can't see and then casually stroll back. They become pinned, allowing for some truly magnificent hit combos. This isn't really a flaw, or indeed a problem, it's pretty fun, and saves waiting around for the baddies to stroll back. So, arcade mode will keep you engaged for a good while, and of course you can also play multiplayer, as you may have noticed throughout this video, with up to a whopping four players, and it's a lot of fun. The game really does capture that retro beat-em-up feeling of fun you had with your mates, crammed into a bedroom packed around the 14-inch TV and just playing the hours away. Of course, being the Switch, you can pack yourselves around an even smaller screen and use the tiny joypads. An experience which makes you feel like a giant. Well, actually you just feel like you're playing with a small child's toy. Unless you are a child, and that is fine. But who cares? Being able to work together in games like this is an extremely rewarding and bonding experience. You know, bring your worst enemy round and you'll be friends in no time. Unless they're crap, then maybe not. Lastly but not least, well, maybe it is least, but it's still fun. There's also a survival mode if you want relentless carnage. It's especially useful for trying out the characters you haven't played yet, like this guy and his scorpion style moves. All in all, it's a really good outing by Secret Base, and a game I'll be replaying a few times. You know, because it's, it's just fun. It's an intense yet relaxing experience which feels like it's from the 90s. And really, that's all I ever want in a game. Thanks for watching this review. There's some more stuff here. Subscribe, give it a thumbs up, that really helps. Or, you know, help me with Patreon, whatever you like. In any case, have a great evening.